Welcome to the Fittish Dad Podcast. I am your host, Caleb Bowers. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Fittish Dad Podcast. Thanks for joining us this week. Um, we're going to talk about some good stuff today. I actually took a little um, poll today over some different topics to see what people wanted to hear about and the votes are in so we're going to talk about what everybody voted for um before we go into that let us go ahead and dive into our oops our devotional here um i'm going to be reading out of ephesians chapter 6 and uh, verse 4 and it says this Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. So, for you fellow dads out there, and I don't know if if you have the same tendency. Maybe it's just me and my personality, but sometimes I like to just kind of you know, you like to kind of, you like to kind of mess, pick on the kid, pick on the wife, not, not maliciously, you know, not to be mean or to belittle or demean, but just, you know, just because it's kind of funny, like you would do with your friends, you know, you would do it to your guy friends, you pick on each other and stuff like that. And I've had to stop myself a lot because I've realized that uh that's not that is not the the emotions and that's not the uh reactions that I want to provoke out of out of my child is um frustration annoyance anger resentment you know and that might be kind of dramatic but over time that's what builds and you know maybe as he gets older and and starts to and there's that foundation of love and trust and, and, um, you know, stability and all that sort of thing, then, you know, you can start teasing and stuff because it's based on a foundation um, that's solid and not unstable. Um, But it says, rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. And that's really what I want to talk about with that verse, is to raise your children up and the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Well, when you're trying to raise up anybody, when you're trying to teach anybody, you know, if you're trying to teach uh, the new um, hiree at work, or if you're trying to, you know, teach um, somebody at church, you know, something, or you're trying to, uh, you, you help coach your kids little league and you're trying to teach how to field the ground ball, it's really hard to teach what you don't know. Um, you know, I like to coach people and stuff like that and help them get into running, train and run their first races. And I can only help coach people in things that I have already done myself. You know, there's a lot of stuff I can theoretically help them, you know, coach them because I theoretically know how it should go and what is necessary but not having done the work myself and accomplished that goal myself yet, I can't take them there because, you know, as we know, we don't live in a theoretical world. We live in a realistic world. We live in a natural, actual, physical world and theoretically doesn't work all the time, even though theoretically it should. And so it's important as fathers and as men that we understand discipline and instruction from the Lord. Because we cannot teach our children, we cannot teach our sons and our daughters how to be disciplined and follow the instructions and be obedient to the word if we ourselves do not walk that path first. And so I just wanna encourage you all today to really, you know, as we go through the end of this year, starting in 2025, is to really tighten up and strengthen yourself and commit to the discipline of reading your word, of listening for instruction, of spending time with God, 
and really, really focus on building yourself and your own walk so then you can turn around and teach it to your children. And how do you do that? Well, they'll watch you. They'll watch you do it. And that's how they'll first learn. Before they ever come and ask you a question, they watch what you do. Before they ever think about, because, you know, it's, I, I you do it is, is not what would my dad say? So what would my dad do in this situation? You know, because, and then, and then it might, oh, what would he say? Okay, well, what would he think? But it always comes first and foremost to what would my dad do? You know, my son's three and he's already starting to do it where he'll just copy things that I do. Um, and, but he said, what would dad, you know, what is dad doing? What would dad do in this situation? I, he'll look to me in situations to see how to react. It's like, okay, okay, that's what we do. Okay, cool. And so it's important that you first model that behavior yourself because what you sow into your children is what you will reap later. It said, if you sow that to them at a young age, when they're, you know, children, when they're toddlers, then you start to reap those benefits when they're teenagers. If you wait till they're teenagers to start sowing that, then you'll reap it later, but you won't reap it until after probably some tumultuous, tumultuous teenage years. Um, and once again, you know, and that's just speaking theoretically, because like I said, I don't have teenagers, but having been a teenager, I, I do have some insight knowledge into how that works. Uh, but that's all I have to share for that for today. So I want to pray real quick and then we'll dive into what we want to talk about today. Dear Lord, thank you for today and thank you for this opportunity. We have to come together to listen to your word and to receive your instruction, Lord, I ask that you give us wisdom and understanding on how to raise up strong men and women of God who live in fear and admonition of the Lord, who are doing mighty works for the kingdom, and who walk in purpose and fulfillment. Lord, I ask that you be with us, you bless us, and you guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So today, guys, I want to talk about how to deal with dad guilt. Um, said I posted a couple topics, and, and the one that got voted on the most was dad guilt, dad guilt and fitness. Um, if you are wondering why I have this big sweat stain on me right now, it's because I actually just finished my run. It is currently 10.09 p.m. Um, I started my run at like 9.20-ish. I uh, did just three miles. I got a big speed workout tomorrow, so I just did a nice and easy three miles. It's 50 degrees outside. Christmas lights are up. It was a wonderful run, actually. Um, but and when I talk about dad guilt, you know, because I you know, you hear about mom guilt or, or I see it all over social media and stuff like that, you know, dealing with you know, mom guilt and stuff like that. I don't see a lot. I've seen some, but not a lot about dad guilt. Um and, and what that means. And, you know, mom guilt is, uh, is different than, you know, mom guilt has to do with obviously being a mother and, and raising your children and, and how to nurture your children properly. Um, but dad guilt, at least for me and whatever I've experienced, uh, is, is a little different. You know, I remember when Sam was first born and, um, we liked to go on a lot of walks, a lot of family walks. And, um, this was when he would still sit in a stroller, so it was a lot easier. We'd be pushing him around and talking about, you know, all sorts of things. Excuse me. And um, I remember we were talking about, you know, she she has always thought she would just be a working mom, but she's, like, started teaching her, I really kind of want to stay home. And it's funny because she wanted to do less and be home more. Um, I said, and it's funny because when I had Sam, I said, I all of a sudden had this like instinctual urge, you know, uh, primordial uh, animalistic instinct to all like begin to like, I need to go and conquer the world and bring home everything and like and, and build and build and work and work and build and build, um, you know, and and it's funny just because it was the opposite thought from both of us, natural thought and feeling and reaction, but the, they both played together. It said, 
you know, as you have this baby, you know, the mom wants to be home more to, to love, nurture, and raise this child. And as a father, I feel this, this masculine urge to, I need to go out and conquer the world and create this safe and secure environment for my child. Um, you know, financial security, physical security, emotional security. I need to lock down everything. I need to get everything together, uh, you know. And the, those, those play a part in each other because obviously you need both. You can't have one without the other. Um, I mean, you can, but you will find a dysfunctional family and you will find it lacking in something. And so that's the importance of having a father and a mother and, and the, the, the dual roles. You know, it's like, yes, they're obviously very different things. They're very different roles, but they're, they're complementary. They, they don't go well without the other. You can have it, but it just, it won't work as well without the other. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's easy to get this dad guilt of, I'm not doing enough, um, you know, uh, of failure of when things are tight or when things are difficult, um, when things don't work out, when you make a mistake, you know, when you slip, when you, uh, aren't as disciplined as you want to be, when you, um, you know, you don't, you skip the workout, you eat too much, you know, you eat the whole pint of ice cream, you do this, you do that, whatever it may be. And you don't do the things that you said you were going to do or that you know that you need to do to get you to where you want to go to create the life that you have the desire for in your heart to create for your family. And you get this immense guilt and shame that you're not doing enough. And because you're not doing enough, you'll never be enough. You're worthless. You're useless. And, you know, it, it seems kind of dramatic, but I, and maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just a big drama queen, but I, I know I've felt that before, you know, especially it's, you know, coming, it's quickly coming to the holiday season. Thanksgiving's coming up in a few weeks and then Christmas after that. And there's just so much going on and um, life gets so busy and the days get shorter and colder and, you know, uh, there's more things to do, more money that's needed, um, this, that, and the other thing. And you look back and all the things you didn't do this year that you said you were going to do or just didn't work out or all this sort of, and just this big, you know, massive pile of crap that you have to carry, you know, the weight of the world on your shoulders. And it can be overwhelming. But as men, we don't talk about it because it's hard to be vulnerable and admit um, because the world tells you that, you know, it tells men pretty much sh sit down, shut up, you know, provide and do what you're supposed to do. Don't whine about it. Nobody cares, um, which is true. The world does not care. You know, I, I get the opportunity to speak to a lot of younger, you know, middle school and high school guys uh, with helping with youth at church and, um, and also have done, have, having done, we used to do the children's ministry at church and now all those children are in middle school and high school. And so we help with them and have grown close with them. And so I get the opportunity to really speak to them. And I tell them all the time is that is it's, it, you don't have time to waste, you know, you don't have time to waste, um, being a stupid kid, being a stupid boy, being an immature man, uh, because this world wants nothing more than to chew you up and spit you out and leave you on the ground. Um, and just to keep knocking you back over. But, and, and I know that sounds kind of like, well, dang, that's kind of like, isn't church and you're supposed to be speaking life? I said, well, I tell them, I said, I, I, I start with that, but I said, but. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is Christ. Greater is the Holy Spirit. Greater is God. Greater is the grace and mercy and the redemption that I have received than any power in the world that there is. Said that the love of God covers me and envelops me and overwhelms me. And it says that nothing in this world 
Nothing in this world can separate you from the love of God. And so you look at what the reality of the world is, and then you look at the reality of what the power of God can do, and that is where the two meet. And you understand, okay, I feel like it sucks because it does. There's, there's no point in, in ignoring the reality of reality and that life sucks sometimes. Life is hard sometimes. You know, it's hard to be a man. It's hard to be a woman. It's hard to be an adult. It's hard to be a kid. It's hard to be alive. It, it requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of sacrifice. You're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to say stupid stuff. You're going to do stupid stuff. You're going to do something you wish you didn't do. You're not going to do something you wish you would have done. And then you are sitting there stuck with it all, feeling like a failure. But the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. The Bible says uh, we have the victory through Jesus Christ. The Bible says I'm an overcomer. It says I'm a conqueror. But how do I connect that to the reality of the situation that I'm in? Because I don't always feel like one. And my circumstances don't always match to that. Well, that's when you, you have to look at it. You have to change your perspective of how you look at it. Because that dad guilt you feel that you're not doing enough, you could either use it as fuel or you can use it to bury yourself and say so you can use it to, you know, light something in you to, to, to give you the drive and the motivation to continue to dig deeper, to work harder, to push farther, to go faster than you have before because you have something to work towards. You have a reason to keep going because it's going to get hard. You're going to get tired. You know, the Bible says, do not grow weary in doing good. So obviously it's saying, you're going to grow weary in doing good. It's saying, do not. If it's saying, do not, that means that doing good can make you grow weary. So do not grow weary in doing good. Because at the proper time, it says at the proper time, God will, all the things that God has planned for you will come to pass. He said, if you continue to do what you're supposed to do, if you continue to walk in obedience, if you continue to listen to the instruction of the Holy Spirit, if you continue to do the work that is required of you, if you set aside how you feel and you walk by faith and not by sight, and sight is a sensory, emotions are a reaction to those sensories said, if you put those aside and you walk by faith, then you will reach the destination that God has for you because you will be walking by the instruction that he gives you. And what does that have to do with fitness? You know, what does that have to do with running? What does that have to do with health? Well, I know for me, you can feel guilt because you're like, oh, I need to work out, but I need to spend time with my kids, but I need to work, but I need to do this, but I need to do that, but I need to... Um, you know, I, I need to be all things to all people at all times. So, and I can't let anybody down and I can't ever mess up and I can't ever make a mistake and I can't ever slow down and I can't ever take a break because if I ever have to take a break or, or take some time or be vulnerable or admit weakness or admit that I'm tired or admit that I can't do it, then I'm useless to the world around me. And those are very overwhelming feelings. And it's important that you're honest with yourself about those feelings. Like, okay, I am feeling these things. They are happening. I'm experiencing this. It is real. Because if you just continue to ignore them, like I have done for so long and so many times, then you just find yourself stuck in the same rut, the same cycle where you're doing good and then you mess up or you uh, realize you're not perfect again and down goes the spiral, you hit the bottom, go back up, down goes, the you know, and then you just keep doing it until the end of time. But we don't have time to waste doing all that. You know, I have a, a, a client that I work with, his name's Frank, I hope he's watching this. Um, 
but you know he's he's wanting to you know lose some weight and train to run a specific time and 5k and stuff like that and just growing in discipline and growing in consistency and he's doing an absolutely fantastic job um makes me feel bad half the time because like he's he's just on it he's on it all the time and but the other day he texted me and was like oh you know i ate bad today and stuff like that um and there needs to be a balance you know i tried to balance my response as well as i could of hey you know it's okay you 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 messed up one day it doesn't erase all your progress but also you know tighten up lock in get back to work it's because you have to be able to balance those of crap i messed up i need a break i you know i need a rest i need to be vulnerable you know and that's why i um i had a real crap day today in in kind of a you know, uh, just some stuff going on, you know, personally, work-wise, stuff like that the past couple of days. It's, it's really it's kind of got me peeved and annoyed and frustrated and unsure of what to do moving forward, stuff like that. You know, just normal life stuff. And I was driving home and I was just like, oh, it just eyes are glazing over. And I realized I was just starting that emotional spiral of what was me and all that sort of thing. So I was like, you know, I need to call my friend and there was something he said the other day and I made me think of it and it was, you know, really, it meant a lot, you know, I, I, it helped me a lot and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, let me just call and talk to him. And we actually ended up not talking about that. We talked for maybe five minutes and just went on this wild tangent of just saying these out of pocket random things, but it just got me laughing so hard um and you know he had to go and and so i texted him after i said you know in all seriousness i actually called you because i was having a crap day and stuff like that i said and i said you don't know how much i just needed that i just needed that you know that that masculine connection we you know just made these jokes it made me laugh it reminded me i'm not alone it reminded me that you know that that there is more going on in my life and in my world than just this thing that's annoying me currently. Um, and it's important that we have those masculine relationships and, and as men and as fathers. And that's why I started the Fittish Dad Running Club is not just, you know, to keep each other accountable physically, but so we can grow mentally and emotionally and spiritually and keep each other accountable as men to being men, not to just being fit, not to just running every day or whatever we're current challenge we're doing, but to grow in fear and admonition of the Lord. It's like I talked about when we read that uh, out of Ephesians 6, is it to, to challenge and to keep each other accountable in the discipline and instruction that comes from God. And that's why it's so important that we keep that discipline physically, that discipline emotionally, that discipline spiritually, and that discipline emotionally. Because it's just like I was talking about with the father and mother. If you're lacking in one, it's going to affect the other. If you're lacking in physical discipline, it's going to affect your emotional discipline. And if you're lacking in emotional discipline, it's going to affect your mental discipline. And all of those will lack and hit and hurt your spiritual discipline. Because you can feed your spiritual discipline but if you're not also feeding the other ones, they said, then you have three on one and you are shooting yourself in the foot. And that's where that cycle begins. It's like you have a, you know, it's like you have a flat tire on one side and a full tire on the other. And you just keep going in circles, going in circles. It said, you need all tires to be fully aired up and without any damage. So you can ride smooth and fast towards the goal, towards the purpose that God has for you. And that's why it's so important as fathers is that we don't get caught up in the guilt that we're not doing enough and that we can we can feel those things and we can accept that we feel those things, but to not let yourself be fueled or more like be held back and bogged down and burdened by those things. And that's why it says in the Bible, it says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. It said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, the yoke, 
the yolk why it is um and it's it's not yolk like egg yolk yolk it's yolk y-o-k-e which is talking about that's what they use on cattle and stuff like that that they put on them then when they're plowing a field is you are going to be controlled and steered by something in your life and so you can either be controlled and steered by your emotions or you can be controlled and steered by what god says the power of the holy spirit working through you the word of god the power of prayer and all those things he said my yoke is easy and my burden is light so just lay down those feelings lay down that shame and that guilt that you don't have to carry you don't have to hold on to because that's what jesus paid for when he died on the cross not just for your sins but all your sickness all your disease all your shame and all your guilt so that you can be the man and father that God has created you to be. So I'm gonna cut it there. I said, I know it's, you know, it's a short video, but that pretty much just kind of hits what I wanna talk about today. Um, so, and, and if I wanna start doing shorter videos because I wanna start doing multiple a week. I wanna start releasing two episodes a week, uh, working on getting that scheduling fit out. Um, but thank you guys for joining. If you haven't, go join the Fittish Dad Running Club my free school online community of dads who are working together to be better. Uh, you can find the link in my bio and my Instagram, um, or we'll put it in the link of the video uh, and um, go follow me on Instagram. If you don't like subscribe uh, to the Thrive Media page and hit that notification bell so you can see all of our uh, get notified when all of our episodes are uploaded. Uh, mine and everybody else's. There's a lot of us, uh, a lot of great podcasts out there. But love you guys. Thanks for joining us this week on the Fittish Dad Podcast. We'll see you soon.